Hello, I'm Tina Jennings. Now, we have really been learning so much this week on the show leading up to Fall Prevention Awareness Day, which is actually tomorrow. The Pima County Health Department has brought experts in to talk about everything from how to eliminate risks at your home to how to get educated. Well, today we are going to focus on medications that can also lead to falls. To help us with steps people can take to prevent this, Dr. Janie Lee is here with me. Doctor, thank you so much for coming. Of course, thank you. So, is that true that medications can really kind of contribute? to this? So medications can and unfortunately they do cause falls, especially among older adults um, who have body changes with aging. So how is that or how, how do we know that it's contributing? So they become more sensitive to medication effects. So medications such as the heart medicines can actually cause some dizziness or lightheadedness. Um, and then lower their blood pressure when they change body positions. So standing up or changing um, positions can lower their blood pressure and, and increase the risk of falls. And other medicines that affect the brain, such as anxiety, depression, or pain medications, can also increase the risk of falls as well. Um, and the allergy medicines that we can every day buy over the counter can also increase risk of falls due to um, affecting the brain for older adults who are aging too. So we do definitely need to be very careful with medications as we grow older. Well, I love that you're, you're taking the time to say this is not just prescription pills, but stuff that we can pick up over the counter that people may say, oh, well, it's over the counter. It can't do this to me, but it's a good point to, to say this can also have an effect on us. So what can we do to prevent us being a victim to a fall? Um, so definitely um, talk about medications with providers. So especially older adults should have a list of medications that they um, list all of their prescription drugs, over-the-counter medications, even vitamins and herbal products um, so that each provider will know exactly which medications that they're taking. Um, and even natural products can have some ingredients of drugs as well as cause side effects to increase fall risk. So having that complete list of medication is very, very important. And then talking regularly with the providers about the medications and risk for falls, very important. And so we're talking about the, the prescribing of the pills. Is there tools that doctors are using maybe to kind of manage that situation? Yes, yeah, so we have um, the American Geriatric Society updates the Beers criteria um, every few years and that's a criteria that tells the prescribers and health professional teams which medications may not be appropriate for older adults. So it's named after Dr. Mark Beers, um, who's passed away now, but it's been updated by the AGS and we keep up with lists of medications. So as I mentioned the um, allergy medicines before, such, even such as uh, very simple and common medications like Benadryl, um, that are contained in many of the PM products. So you probably have heard Tylenol PM, right. Motrin PM, Aleve PM. Those medications can increase the risk of falls for older adults, but also may increase risk of bleeding if they do injure themselves during a fall. So we can definitely use that Beers criteria. Um, and as, as a team talk about medication prescribing among older adults, and I definitely use it in my practice at the Banner University Medical Center. We have a geriatrics clinic um, and we meet with our patients and go through all of their medications, including vitamins and over-the-counter products and any herbal supplements they might be using um, and really screen that against the Beers criteria to look for any risks. And we're, we're talking about, you know, having that available and the doctors having that available. What about when it comes to pharmacists and what they can do to also kind of help this along? Sure. So pharmacists, we are medication experts. Yeah. Um, and so we can meet with older adults and actually screen for their medicines to make sure that they are taking safe regimen. So looking at the Beers criteria, but also we can... Um, look at the medications to make sure that there aren't any drug-related problems, such as severe side effects or drug interactions within their regimen. Um, we can also advise on the best time of the day to use the medications, whether it be on empty stomach or after meals or away from another medicine. 
Um, so those are all the things that pharmacists can do. And within hospital and clinic settings, we can also make sure that patients are on the correct dose as per their kidney and their liver functions. Um, and then we can also help with prevention and treatment of osteoporosis for uh, people who might have osteoporosis that would increase their risk of fractures if they do fall. There's so much uh, that can be done, but it all has to start with everybody being able to manage what we're taking, making sure that we know what we're taking, how it affects us, and how it all works together. So there's so many people to help us, like you said, our doctor, our pharmacist, uh, managing amongst ourselves, keeping a list of everything that we're taking. Yes. So that's exactly why we're having this conversation today, is to kind of get this conversation going amongst everybody. Right. So doctor, thank you so much for coming in and adding another day and another element to why we're doing Fall Prevention Week this week on the show. So thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, and I hope everyone stay tuned for tomorrow because I know that you guys are talking yes. about balance and fitness, which are super important for fall prevention. And I want to remind everyone to also check their eyes every year um, so that vision, their poor vision, won't contribute to falls. We have so many things to cover, and this is just one other reason uh, this is perfect. You guys, even for more information about Dr. Lee, visit pharmacy.arizona.edu slash jlee. You can get a bunch of information there. Also, stay tuned to the Morning Blend. Like we were saying, tomorrow will be our last day in this four-day fall prevention day series. Or you can also log on to pcoa.org slash fall prevention anytime for more details.